Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Andrew Yang Policy Dive, where I take a look at one of Andrew's many, many policies, explore it, and then give it a grade. If you don't want to miss any policies, be sure to click on that subscribe button down below, ring that bell, and consider supporting the Patreon if you enjoy what I'm doing. But let's get to southern border security. So border security along our southern border has many issues that need to be fixed to provide security for Americans and equity in our immigration system. You need look no further than the stats on how many undocumented individuals are living in the United States, or the amount of drugs that have been apprehended along the border, suggesting a much larger amount that's made it through. Many proposals would be expensive and ineffective, while also being ecologically disastrous. The issue has become politicized to the point where there doesn't seem to be any possible compromise, but our leaders are focusing on single solutions instead of the solutions proposed by groups across the political spectrum. When searching for solutions, we need to work with border security experts, immigrant advocates, and the Mexican government to provide effective, secure, humane border security. There also is a whole pathway to citizenship on the DREAM Act, which I'll cover in a different episode. So here are the problems to be solved. First, large numbers of people are entering the United States illegally, causing economic hardship in certain areas, while also preventing us from knowing who exactly is in our country. Second, illegal immigration is risky for those who are engaging in it, and are at the mercy of so-called coyotes and it hurts those who are trying to immigrate legally. Third, cartels and individuals are trafficking drugs and humans into and out of the United States. Fourth, our asylum system is flooded with cases, resulting in people being enticed to come to the United States and ask for asylum so they can stay here for years before their case comes up. Fifth, Ineffective solutions have become the only solutions that are being discussed with any level of specificity. Here's a quote from the website. We need to enforce the border. Democrats, Republicans, and independents alike agree that this is a pressing need for the good of both citizens and those who wish to come here. Though there are new technologies that could help, the best approaches are to do what we are currently doing better with more resources. So here's the goals. First, safeguard Americans. Second, decrease the number of people entering this country illegally. Third, protect victims of trafficking. Fourth, stop the flow of illegal drugs from Mexico into the United States. Sixth, prevent cartel violence from affecting America. Seventh, provide a humane experience for those seeking asylum. So as President Andrew Yang will, increase funding to secure our landed ports of entry where most drugs enter the United States. Second, Increase funding to our custom enforcement teams that are tasked with preventing human trafficking both into and out of the United States. Third, invest in technologies such as ground and aerial sensors and video towers to allow for efficient and effective means of monitoring stretches of the United States and Mexico border that are rarely crossed but still provide means of entering the United States. Fourth, provide body cameras for all agents along the United States and Mexico border. Fifth, Invest heavily in protecting and renewing the Rio Grande, which serves as a great natural boundary and is currently ecologically struggling. Sixth, provide all resources necessary to allow our asylum court system to function properly, lowering the backlog of cases and thus removing one of the prime reasons we've seen caravans increasing in size and frequency. Seventh, Work with the Mexican government on all these initiatives, as well as anti-cartel initiatives, to, to ensure a positive relationship that allows both countries to serve the needs of their citizens. So that was the Southern Border Security Policy, and i got to start by saying I really do enjoy the ideas that he brings to the table. I think they're great ideas, and I'm going to go over all of them and discuss why I like them a lot. But I'm still only going to give this a B plus, and that's because... It was not what I was expecting. When I clicked on this, and when you were watching this video probably, you thought you maybe were going to hear about drones or robots or artificial intelligence that have, you know, heat seekers or something like that. That's what I thought I was going to hear because that just seems like the future. I feel like that would be the easiest way to monitor the border. And if we walked up to some of these big tech companies and said, hey, we have this huge chunk of land. What's the best way to give us some robots that are going to monitor this and keep them charged and do all this and that? I think we could solve this problem really easily. And I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't hear more about that. Now, they do mention some, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but let's get to the other things that he mentioned. So increase funding to secure our landed ports of entry where most drugs enter the country. So that's a no-brainer. Yes, <laughs> give them more money, get more people, get better equipment, and inevitably, 
we're going to take a lot of drugs out of play that we're going to be coming in the country. That one's a, that's just a common sense measure. Moving on, fantastic idea. Increase funding to our custom enforcement teams that are tasked with preventing human trafficking both into and out of the United States. Same thing, more people, better training, you know, better equipment. Once again, another common sense measure. This is just pumping money into the system, which is a good thing. Invest in technology such as ground and aerial sensors and video towers to allow for efficient and effective means of monitoring stretches of the border. This one, this is what I wanted to hear. This is honestly what I thought I was going to hear a lot about. Sensors and towers. I guess towers is really a fancy word. But that's what I thought I was going to be hearing about. The future. How how the border is going to be monitored. Not in 2020, but more in, say, 2060. And we can get an early jump start on that. So I was a little bit disappointed in that. But I'm glad to see that they are going to be implementing more of that new technology. That, that I think is absolutely essential. And could really make the U.S.-Mexico border a much less likely place to be crossed just because of how difficult it would be and also a safer place as well. So next we have provide body cameras for agents along the border. Yeah, I think this is this is a no-brainer. Just so we we have clarity of what is happening. Some, you know, immigrant comes up and say, this person abused me. We can say, no, 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 you're, you're lying. Or, oh my gosh, that's terrible. You're under arrest. Why would you possibly do this with a body camera on? Either way, Yes, body cameras, and I've done a video on how he wants to do that for all the police, so I think this is just a continuation of that, and I do think it's a great idea. Invest heavily in protecting and renewing the Rio Grande, which serves as a great natural boundary and is currently ecologically struggling. And so I didn't know much about the Rio Grande, and it is, it's bad. It is filled, so are the sites. Chocolate brown water, floating dog carcasses, dead fish, five million gallons of raw sewage spill into its waters every day not not every year not every month every day oh my god this is um i don't know if this is necessarily something that really focuses so much on the immigration issue and solving this issue but it's just gross so i guess <laughs> Cool. This feels like an earmark that he just put in here to, to also make it better. But yeah, if it's that disgusting and it's struggling, yeah, put some money into it. Especially if some people are going to try to use it. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just a whole separate issue, I feel like. But either way, yeah, let's let's fix that. Provide all resources necessary to allow our asylum court system to function properly. Lowering the backlog of cases and thus removing one of the prime reasons we've seen a whole bunch of caravans. So this was actually something I didn't know about because I do enjoy politics, but I'm not, like, obsessed with them. Well, at least until Andrew Yang came along. And I didn't really understand what the concept of a caravan is. So I, in case you don't know... I want to let, help you figure it out. So what it is, is essentially people are trying to come into the United States and say, hey, you can't come to the United States. You got to wait a little bit, then we'll get to your case and let you know if you can come into the United States. So what these people have to do is they have to wait. They don't have cars a lot of the time. They don't have much money. They don't have much of this. They don't have much of that. So what do they do? They all bunch together like a camp just to try and stay warm and stay fed and keep kids and change with little babies and stuff like that. So they essentially are coming together to stay together. And that is what they're calling a caravan. And I had no idea that it was that. And yes, this is a no-brainer. This is absolutely essential. Put more money into that court system so we can get these people either answers of yes, you can come in, or no, you have to go back. So please don't camp around, camp outside of our house. But this is just absurd. Imagine if someone did this with, like, Trick or Treat, and they were like, yes, I have got full-size candy bars in here, but you're going to have to wait outside, and I'll let you know if you can have one in a couple minutes. And so you just kept saying that to all the kids that come up until you eventually have a huge gang of kids just sitting outside of your house. That's essentially what we're doing to, to these immigrants right now. And yes, put more money so they don't have to stay out there, because... I'm sure if I read more about this, it's a, it's a terrible living condition, and it's it's just the human thing to do. So yes, also by doing this just puts humanity first, which is one of the reasons why I've fallen in love with Andrew Yang and his policies. So last, work with the Mexican government on all these initiatives as well as anti-cartel initiatives to ensure a positive relationship that allows both countries to serve the needs of their citizens. Yes, duh. Mexico is our allies. They are our neighbors. They are our friends, and we should treat them as such. I feel like we treat Mexico like hot garbage now. And no, we shouldn't be doing that. We should be working with them because 
we have a very negative impression of the cartel as Americans. We hear about all these terrible things. Now imagine if you had to live in that country where they actually have the cartel and they have to deal with that. Imagine that. Yes, we should be working with Mexico to help them on their biggest issue because if we can help them and they can get themselves on their feet and they can get themselves to a great space, you know what they can then do? They can help us. That's how friendship works and I swear sometimes I feel like these politicians forget that. Countries can help other countries. We could be doing this especially with our neighbors. Why do we not help Canada and Mexico? Why do we feel like these completely distinct different areas, like it's completely isolated? And now it's getting to that point with Republicans and Democrats, where it's completely isolated. So not only have we split ourselves off from our neighbors in North America, but now we're doing it to the middle of the country. And man, it just... Yes! Duh! Of course we should be working with Mexico. We should be, we should be working with Mexico firsthand every day on this. And that's another part that I want to mention that I absolutely love. You know what? We're bumping this up to an A-. minus. No B+. Plus. This is an A-. minus. I still wanted to see more drones and robots and robocops. But the fact that he says right here, when searching for solutions, we need to work with border security experts. Yes, their job is to keep the border secure. We should be talking to them. Okay? Immigrant advocates, yes, absolutely, let's get all the different sides of the story, and the Mexican government, so all of us working together, coming up with a solution, because here's the thing, if we get all of their input, we're going to get the best possible solution that we could have gotten, this is such a no-brainer, it just, oh, politics, man, it's, of course, of course, we should be working with everyone who is a leader of the fields in this thing. So in the end, some southern border security, I want to bump it up to an A, but I'm not going to. I want more drones. I want more robots. It is still a fantastic plan, a common sense plan as well, and a plan that really, I think, could gain partisan support because nothing I see here is totally out of line except for that Rio Grande bit. That was, you know, I <laughs> think Republicans are be like, Nah, we really don't need to be fixing that river, you know, for a billion dollars or whatever it's going to cost. Let's focus on making sure these illegal immigrants aren't getting it. So yes, I'm very pro this policy, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Are there some, uh, some secret issues that I'm not seeing? Did you imagine that he was going to be talking about drones and Robocops or am I just completely off the wall? Let me know in the comments below and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.